The Secrets of Movies and TV Shows is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to The Secrets of Movies and TV Shows. Hi, I'm Dom Bettinelli, and you're listening to The Secrets of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Or Jurassic World 2, maybe, but they don't call it that. So we'll call it Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, where we're going to discuss the hidden layers and deeper meanings of this movie. Joining me today on the panel, as always, when we talk about Jurassic movies, Thomas Sinerho. Hi, Thomas. How's it going, Dom? Very well, thank you. And Father Michael Gossett. Hi, Father Michael. Hello, it's good to be back talking about this again. Yeah, so we would just say it's been uh, about six, seven months since we've talked about it and uh, another uh, and a year before that for Jurassic Park 3. So uh, who knows how long it will be before we get to talk about the final one in the double trilogy of the Jurassic <laughs> movies. But uh, it, it's scheduled. Depends on when it comes out, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so that's going to be the big issue. <laughs> it's scheduled for 2021. But, you know, in these times, who knows when anything is going to be anywhere. So we'll just go with whatever we've got for now. Uh, so we're talking about this uh, second movie of the second trilogy in the Jurassic World. Uh, was it, do we, should we call it the Jurassic World Cinematic Universe? <laughs> <laughs> At this point, maybe, right? Well, uh, l- let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, Jurassic the, Jurassic Park, the, the original movie, was supposed to be, it was, it was created as a standalone. It was a one-off. Um, it was so huge, they said, let's make a sequel. Uh, and they made a sequel. And then they made a third movie. And that was it for a long time until Colin Trevorrow came around what is it six seven eight years ago now or something like that when the first jurassic world came out and Mm -hmm. uh and he came around and so we and then we got the beginning of us what they've now said is going to be a second and final well trilogy but (laughs) we'll see about that yeah yeah in hollywood yeah i would say i would say you know talking about the 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 universe style thing that everything's kind of moving towards now i i think there's a lot of room with the way they end this movie and i'm sure we'll get to talking about it yep that they move into possibilities of a tv series or of some spinoff kind of ideas uh to follow all the the events that arise from the end of this movie Right. I could see Universal because uh, Universal owns the, the rights mm-hmm. so far at the moment and Amblin, which is Spielberg, uh, coming up with some ideas for saying, hey, you know, we could do some fun dinosaur things. And frankly, you remember that short that Colin Trevorrow uh, directed that was on YouTube about the mm-hmm. family camping in the woods when the dinos show up? Uh, that could be, you know, a a bit of a backdoor mini pilot. Uh, idea right <laughs> you know uh so it's an interesting idea uh, that this is but there's this bigger story they're telling and there is a definite uh echoes from the first trilogy to the second trilogy and we're going to get into all of the parallels that that keep coming up between the two uh trilogies uh but but it seems to me there's a there's a large vision here at work in these two movies beyond the the obvious like uh, man's hubris and greed uh, are his downfall. But but I think there's a larger vision that they're working on, and I'm not sure exactly what it is. But but there's something like they're they're they're, they're building to something. I think in mm-hmm. in Dominion, and I don't know if it's a planet of the dinosaurs like planet of the apes sort of thing that we're coming to or what but uh it's it's very interesting i think it's gonna be dinosaurs and cadillacs that's um <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you guys ever watched that cartoon but it was it was fantastic <laughs> uh, well i'm, I'm kind of hoping it's gonna be like uh what was it oh the 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 family with the that they're actually bringing back, you know, not the mama, you know, the uh, dinosaur family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was just called dinosaurs, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 I think it was. Yeah, yeah, not the mama, not the mama, or the Flintstones. I mean, it could be anything. It could be uh, uh, Owen <laughs> Grady as Fred Flintstone. Anyway, <laughs> but this movie is directed by uh, J. A. Bayona, who um, I don't. He's, I think he's Spanish. Uh, he, he's not American. I know that because I, I saw him being interviewed, and he's, he's a very strong accent. Uh, and he's apparently known for his monster movies, more like hmm. movies that involve like scary monsters, like a Godzilla scary monster sort of thing. Uh, not so much uh, 
action adventure movies. Uh, and he, I guess he teaches too. He's a, he's a film professor. So there's a very film professor vibe in a lot of what he does. Uh, but that feel of the monster movie, you get that mm-hmm. in, especially the last act of this movie, which, you know, I don't want to jump too far ahead, which is the sort of the monster in the house at night in a storm, you know, mm-hmm. feel. Right. So there's, there's a, there's a lot of that feel to this, which makes it a little different from, the other Jurassic movies in that yeah. sense. Very much that strike back to the old school, like Wolfman on the roof, oh, howling yeah. to the moon, yes. you know, and like yeah. you saw a lot of those shots in, oh, in yeah. that last section. And in fact, that shot of the Indoraptor lowering itself by the door was a shot mm-hmm. for shot remake from the 1978, 79 Dracula uh, of, oh, of, oh, of, a, yeah. of a similar scene where it like literally the hand reaching down from above to unlock the door, like was a shot for shot. He, he, I, he says uh, online that, that that's, it was an homage. So uh, hmm. he's a huge, you know, uh, monster fan. So that, that was very interesting. So it, it's written and produced by Colin Trevorrow, who, who's now sort of the, um, he's the, the keeper of the flame for Jurassic <laughs> movies now. Right. Yeah. I, I I think it's so funny. We have all of these new, like, you know, John Favreau and, um, uh, and then you have, uh, the, all of the group that's running the different sections of the star Wars universe and yep. all of the, you know, so you got MCU and star Wars universe and everything. And they're all kind of the Spielbergs and Lucas's of, of our era, you know, they, yeah. they're, and they're even getting past the torch from those guys. Right. Uh, right. So I think that's an interesting kind of move that we're making for these, for this new and up and coming group. They're being given a lot of huge responsibilities too. I mean, wasn't Colin Trevorrow originally going to do a star Wars trilogy and then that was taken away from him. And, yeah. uh, there's yeah. been a few things like that. He was supposed to do rise of Skywalker and that got taken away. And there's no one's ever really said exactly why. And mm-hmm. His original script came out and a lot of people are, you know, especially the haters are all like, that was a better movie. But because, of course, it they think it would have been a better movie. But, you know, it's mm-hmm. always better in theory. Uh, but <laughs> grass it, is always greener. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, so he was supposed to direct it and he ended up not directing it. No one really knows why. Um, but, yeah, there there's um there's this generation of these film directors who just seem to be big they seem to be everywhere um i also saw in the credits guillermo del toro del toro was uh was thanked it was a thank he wasn't didn't have like hmm. a credit he wasn't a producer or a writer or anything like that but he was you know and and a, a thanks at the end so i don't know what he's sort of one of these guys these directors who kind of shows up and like offers his his advice i think you know he's sort of he's not really a consultant he's just a director who's a friend who kind of shows up on set one day and gives a pep talk to the director or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? He just, he kind of shows up at these different movies and it's, well, he sounds like one of those guys that's like really into everything. Like he's really passionate about, about mm-hmm. filmmaking. Yes. And so I, I think that's, that's where that kind of thing comes from is like when, uh, when he's involved, it's, it's mostly just a passion project for him. He just right. stepped in, he offered some advice and, and there it was. So yes. And I could see this being very much in his, down his alley. Oh yeah. Oh, the yeah. Monster <laughs> movies sort of credentials and, just targeting back to all those older things. Right. Uh, what? So let's talk about a couple of things that are in this movie. One of them is Jeff Goldblum came back to revive his mm-hmm. character of Ian Malcolm, which is great. I mean, Jeff, Jeff Goldblum reading the phone book is a lot of fun. I mean, that just having <laughs> Jeff Goldblum anywhere. Uh, he showed up, shot his scenes in a day, and they bookend the movie. He's giving his testimony before uh, a Senate hearing, and they open they essentially open the movie with that and close the movie with that uh to to a, a degree and and the apparently the stuff that he's saying is nearly verbatim from Michael Crichton in right. in the book mm. yeah it is it, it it's it's very close to the the kind of moral uh moral of the story that Crichton throws in for uh for his bookends yes. on uh Jurassic Park Okay, and and so we we get. I mean, we, we, it's going to be hard to miss the lesson in this. <laughs> we'll we'll right. go over it again, but but so there's like the small picture of the monster in the house. That's what we can't talk about. And then there's the big picture: is what happens when man meddles in the very fabric of life? Uh, you know, in into into gets himself over his head with powers beyond him, and that's that's really the big message here. 
um, that we're not as big and powerful and in control as we think we are. Uh, and I think that's, there's truth in that, right? <laughs> that you know, yeah. we, we aren't the biggest, the biggest thing on the block, the most important. Especially when we start making bigger things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's exactly it. The phrase that, uh, oh, what is the, I can't, Eli Mills says, once you open the box, you can't put it back in. And right. As terrible of a person he is, he's, he's totally right in this situation that they've meddled in something way bigger than them. And now it's totally out of their control. And it's, and he's, what he's referring to is the mythological pandora's box and he's right. kind of saying it's a good thing but like maybe you need to go reread what pandora's box story <laughs> was about it was a very bad thing that, that came out of that box um it, you know one of the questions that kind of comes up to is at this point are these even dinosaurs anymore and that that's kind of a, a question they start to deal with here these aren't really the dinosaurs of millions of years 65 million years ago in fact they came up in the original trilogy as well mm -hmm. These are something new. Once you start mixing DNA and manipulating them, they look like dinosaurs or what we think dinosaurs look like, but they're they're actually a whole new creation that we're responsible mm -hmm. for. And we really get that <laughs> rammed down our throat with the, the big baddie, the Indoraptor in this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, so th th I think that's a, a key aspect of this is what are these dinosaurs? Um, and, uh, and by the way, we're spoiling the movie for you. So if you haven't seen the movie, you need to go because I'm about to, to spoil a key plot point here, uh, with my next thing I want to bring up before we get into the, the, the actual plot of the movie, the, the little girl, Maisie is, it turns out she has been cloned from her quote unquote mother, uh, who has died and it, it we're using the same techniques that they did for the dinosaurs. And so what makes her less of a monster than the others, than mm -hmm. the dinosaurs? Now, the the key, we, we I think from our point of view, we'd say is because she's human. We're not, humans are simply not just a different kind of animal. We we are human beings. And she's a different person because she has a, a different soul than her mother. But yet, so, so how she came to be doesn't affect whether she is human or not. I, I would I, I challenge that, though, with the movie, the movie itself uh -huh. uh, puts that in perspective with the with the character of Blue and how well trained uh -huh. Blue is. And you see that through the course of the of the movie that how well trained Maisie is. Right. Because she's she's got a very wild streak in her uh -huh. and she does a lot of things that are not. That are, that are typical kid things, but in ways that not that wouldn't be done by a typical kid. And you can blame that on eccentricity to a degree. Mm. But at the same time, you see that she's being trained by this, uh, the woman that, that, you know, that was the caregiver for his daughter initially, but is now the right. caregiver for her. And so there's that moment where uh, she's told to use proper English. Yes. And so she changes from the American accent back to the British accent. Mm. And, and all of those little things that, that gave me the, the clue that I think in this next one, in the next movie, she's going to play a bigger role uh, to show that, you know, these, these monsters can be trained. They can be taught to be civil but it has to be done from the beginning and it has to be, you know, they have to be like mm. kind of reared in that, that, that vein and they have to be really taught and really handled well. And I, I, I thought that was an interesting, you know, and we'll talk about it more as we go through the plot, but I thought that was a really interesting point that was made with her. Interesting. That she's, she's trained well. Huh? She's been, yeah, she's being raised well is, is mm -hmm. I think as uh, Iris, the governor says, um, and even exactly. molded into, her quote unquote mother. Yes. Right. She's being trained to be this person that she's not. Mm -hmm. Right. They're her, her, her grandfather. Uh, I'm, I'm doing air quotes. So that on a podcast, uh, I'm, I, <laughs> uh, but her grandfather even kind of alludes to that at, 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 at one or more points. All right. So one of the things I wanted to kind of mention is, is there's much of the movie parallels Jurassic park too, in that we move from, we go to back to the island, then we go to the mainland where dinosaurs are on the loose. There's that sort of overall uh, um, image, mirror image of it uh, that, that we're getting. But there are lots of parts of it that are 
pulled that are pulled, you know, mirror image or or type anti type to use a Catholic term uh, from uh-huh. other parts of the other movies. So the, uh, those are a couple of things I want to um, to bring up. But what we have here is, is we have someone reluctantly returning to the island under false pretenses. There's a betrayal lucky escape by ships with dinosaurs on board then the dinosaurs get loose due to man's hubris right <laughs> that's pretty and much it, pretty close <laughs> there were there were hunters there you know there yes. was a whole group of hunters on the on the island yes. uh, the tranquilizers played a big part of it <laughs> uh, and for, uh, to be honest i like the original hunter better than the than wheatley in this one i think i, I liked him better um so we do we start with the island at night in in the rain because of course um and we have this underwater submersible entering the giant crocodile enclosure. And as soon as we see this, we know exactly <laughs> what's going to happen here. Uh, they're going in to steal the a bone from Indominus Rex, which as we saw at the end of the last movie, uh, died uh, falling into the, the enclosure. The croc, the giant crocodile got it. Um, and they think the giant croc is dead by now. And that's, this is the mistake that everyone keeps making throughout this movie is, well, they'd be dead They're, by now, right? They'd be dead by now. Be dead throughout by this now. series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much. Are you willing to bet your life on it uh, is the uh, uh, question. And so uh, and that's one of the things that gets me is, is how often people, like the people in these things just do so, it's just so dumb. Like, why is that guy sitting in the rain unprotected, you know, uh, with the control panel, not like waiting for a dinosaur to come out at him because that's what's going to happen because this is, Isla Nubar. <laughs> this is what happens mm-hmm. here. Uh, so I want to know how much these guys are getting paid, right? Uh, exactly to, these, for these companies. Like this is, I'll do this. This is worthwhile. <laughs> I will do it for one million dollars to my to my heirs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. That's it's, it's an insurance fund that you're <laughs> that you're <laughs> paying for at that exactly. point. Exactly. <laughs> so of course, uh, long story short, they don't account for the dinos being alive. The guys. Most of the guys get eaten and the giant croc escapes out the open gate uh, to the thing. And and th- they kind of leave that hanging until the very end where we like the where we get those last shots that that shot we had in the uh, trailers, by the way, of the giant croc behind the surfers, which I don't think I'm ever going to go in the ocean again now because <laughs> <laughs> sharks are bad enough. But uh, but uh, so I'm going to I want to put a bet on it that would th- that thing is th- that croc is going to be in the next movie it has to be i mean we've got to close the loop on that yeah it's become the, the kind of iconic big baddie uh you know yeah. that the t-rex was in the first series and right. even though the t-rex is still awesome now it's... yes you always need the bigger <laughs> the bigger di- there's right. always a bigger dinosaur i think is what yeah. the, Malcolm <laughs> says at one point uh so with and so what it is with three years after jurassic world uh had its disaster uh, the vol- the Isla Nubar has a volcano. Now, this is the most the, the worst luck company ever. Like they built their park <laughs> in this whole thing on a giant volcano. Like, did no one do a geological survey? So it was dormant, right? You don't worry about that. <laughs> it's apparently a super massive volcano. So that when it explodes, the entire island is going to. I was thinking, can you imagine if the park was still open when this happened? <laughs> right. That would have been very bad uh, for for everything. Worse than the dinos, maybe. Uh, but not but, surprising. Yeah, right, right. Uh, so, and there's apparently political debate over whether to save the last living dinosaurs on the planet. And I wonder, though, you know, for the movie, you've got to do it. But would people really care? Would people. I mean, there'd be some people, but would there really be these big demonstrations and big political debates over whether we're going to save the dinos? What do you do you think? I thought the interesting thing that uh, the main character, she's talking to the congresswoman and yep. says, your kids have grown up in a world with dinosaurs. Do you want them to watch them go extinct again? That was the because uh, I mean, up to that point, I was like, this is stupid. This is right. This is absurd that people are arguing about this. But I can see that argument carrying. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Right. That's it's true. It's true. Like once they were exist again, how could we give up on them? Uh, because the because for the kids, for because in, in that world, the dinos have been around for 20, 30 years by that point. Right. Um, well, you have and you have a, a person working on her staff who's a, a paleo veterinarian and ha- has I think, I think that's what she is. But and and has never seen a dinosaur right mm-hmm. you know and it's like 
what does that even but that that makes sense like you would have somebody like that that would be interested you know there are people that, that study the veterinarian uh, veterinary uh, uh sciences of of animals that they're probably not ever going to see but they right study it from a zoological standpoint and it's because those animals exist and there may be a need for them at some point to go and assist with them right well i mean it's sort of like being a, a paleo by you know paleobotanist or a paleobiologist right. bi- biologist like you're studying them bones and stuff <laughs> well now you know you're kind of studying them from afar uh, I, I, I suppose i could see it but i'm not sure i'm not sure her dad was happy with her going to Measuring in that in college. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what are you ever going to use this? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, she was right. Uh, so uh, we we have her to thank. Uh, so we have this, and then we have the uh, Senate hearing, and Malcolm says that the dinosaurs need to die. That's like they they were extinct before; they should go extinct again. Um, we altered the course of natural history, and this is nature correcting itself. Uh, and uh, and. One of the senators asked him, you know, is, is this an act? Are you saying this is an act of God? And Malcolm says God doesn't have anything to do with this equation, uh, and, and, which is not how, actually how I would phrase it. But I think what the, the, the sentiment is, God didn't cause this. Man caused this through his own fallen nature. We, we did this to ourselves. And so. Right. It's it's cor- nature corrects, you know, corrects these things. Right. And I think it goes back to that, back to the, the, the things we were saying about that. They're not these aren't actually dinosaurs. These are are genetic aberrations that we made. Right. And we've seen what they've been, what they've done, what their tendency is to do, especially when we make them bigger and badder and worse than they were before. Right. And we kind of need to just let it go. <laughs> like just mm-hmm. right. Okay. <laughs> We're good. Uh, this is actually the the best solution because nobody has to go finish them. Just let the island finish. Them. Yes, this is this is the best solution is we don't have to take any active steps. We just have to sit back and let nature take its course. Uh, and then he makes the point. Um, we've amassed a landmark technological power and proven ourselves incapable of handling it. Uh, and he makes the connection. He says we could be saying this about nuclear power or gene editing or uh, whatever. And he says the de-extinction of the dinosaurs is just the beginning of the, of the problems that we're creating for ourselves because we now have more power than we are, who have wisdom to do with it. And so the, the commentary here is going way beyond Jurassic park and the, in the imaginary world of it, but to, the real world, which is we have in the past, especially in the past century, amassed so much technological ability that it far surpasses our capability and our wisdom of handling it properly, as we see uh, even today, which is the as we speak, is an anniversary of the dropping of the of the atom bomb on Hiroshima. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we, we showed ourselves incapable of <laughs> of wisdom with that technology. But uh, so I, I just I think it's an interesting viewpoint that this this movie these movies are essentially a parable on on power on the on technological power uh, a, a warning for us uh, which is on uh, on asking whether we should not just whether we could right that's right. <laughs> to go back to that original question from yes. the original movie yes you you were so what was it you were so excited about whether, whether you could that you never stopped to ask whether you should uh mm. and that is yeah the the key question here there's a real, it seems like an unwillingness to learn um, yeah. <laughs> a part of humanity. And I mean, like we can say in real life, but particularly in in these stories that um, just over five movies, and we know there's at least six, that um, no one seems to learn a lesson, including so many of the people who have face-to-face almost been killed. And <laughs> <laughs> do you not see the... The pattern, maybe us watching from the outside and, and see, being entertained, we like, well, don't open the door, don't go in the room, <laughs> of right. course. But uh, um, it does speak to to the reality that I mean, we we go on and on, we open these boxes, and uh, we don't we don't like dealing with the consequences, right? Yeah, right. We pretend that the consequences won't happen again, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Well, and I think there's also there's also the the nod. It's getting stronger. Uh, the the first movie you kind of you're able to miss this sort of monetary purpose of it. Right. Because, you know, Hammond seems so altruistic. He seems like a kid in a candy shop with all the dinosaurs and everything like that. But you forget that it's, it's a moneymaker. That's, 
that's the entire purpose of this park right and and so as we're moving along now we're seeing more and more where the potential to use these dinosaurs this technology uh in in abusive ways Mm -hmm. for the most profit uh comes in and that's it's a tendency of us as humans to do that to to take something that's new and to use it in a way that is purely uh purely financially beneficial and doesn't uh you know what what they could be doing with this level of genetic technology is just right you know fixing can solving cancer solving all sorts of mm-hmm. uh communicable and otherwise in genetic diseases uh, and yet they're using it to make gigantic weapons basically <laughs> right well that's the thing is we either want to make money off of it or we want to blow you know kill something with it or uh, happily both, if we can, you know, that sort of thing, mm-hmm. make a profit yep. while we're using the thing to kill the technology to kill others. Uh, yeah, that that seems to be a, a constant human tendency. And it seemed that Hammond at least ha- could appreciate the dinosaurs for their for their own sake, like a sense uh-huh. of awe and wonder. And that you see as we've gone on, the different billionaires who are doing this stuff just that less and less, mm-hmm. right. They they lose touch with that with his vision more and more, um, and then you can see why that the, the breakdown between Benjamin Lockwood, who's about to show up, and and Hammond would occur because of that because Lockwood was misusing the technology from Hammond's viewpoint. It was this is mm-hmm. not why we're doing this to do this because mm-hmm. because I think Hammond had a moral center of no that would that would be abominable that would be i'm sorry for your loss but to create a to clone a human being using this technology is too far i think but it just shows that it's it's step by step we move further and further down the line it's not one giant leap but one little nudge at a time and then suddenly we're in a place that we it's horrible to be so i did Mm -hmm. mention lockwood so benjamin lockwood was hammond's partner back in the day they had a falling out uh but and so claire gets this call from Lockwood's uh, foundation and she goes, she's invited to go out there. Uh, I loved Lockwood's mansion. I just, I, it was really yeah. cool. I just, I <laughs> love the set. Um, and, and inside it's, it's like a natural history museum where it has this, this setup with all the dinosaur bones and all that sort of thing. Um, and we meet Eli Mills who runs Lockwood's foundation for him. He is our villain. Uh, he comes across as young and idealistic and friendly at first. Uh, and they're, basically they're proposing to her that she goes and gets Owen Grady, uh, played by uh, um, Chris Pratt, to to help them save Blue and the other dinosaurs because they're going to move as many of them they can away from the Volcano Island to a new sanctuary where they will roam free and not as tourist attractions. And so it appeals to Claire's altruistic um, new outlook on life. Claire has changed a lot from the last movie. She's no longer the high-powered executive. She's now the uh, altruistic uh, uh, campaigner to save the the dinosaurs. And so they need Claire because she was an executive who could turn on the tracking system. They need Owen because he's got the relationship with blue that will help that help uh, them uh, capture her and bring her along. So uh, Lockwood's aims seem to be lofty, save the creatures, let them run free and redeem himself. He feels like he needs to redeem and, and and he tells Claire, you need to redeem yourself, you know, too, apparently. Uh, Mills is about the money. And and he, even at one point, he admits to Claire that this isn't technically legal, that what they're doing is they don't own these animals. They're not theirs to take. Um, but if they save them, people will be fine with what they do, that sort of, that sort of thing. Um, then, uh, so Claire goes to uh, Owen to, to do the convincing it uh, turns out they dated after the island and then broke up. And this so this whole funny scene of them in the bar uh, arguing over who broke up with whom. That's which is you know a bit of a trope. Hmm. I, li- I like Grady's uh, Grady's mentality though, where he's just out in the middle of the wilderness building a cabin, you right, know, mm-hmm. off the grid, <laughs> away from everybody. <laughs> yes. Nothing. It's, it's just him. <laughs> yeah, just just me. Uh, I do like you know when they have this discussion about whether to go or not, and she's like, "They'll die," and he says fine they'll die like let them die they're he's unsentimental about the animals they're they're animals to, for for him they're mm-hmm. not people that if nature takes its course it takes its course and and i i think that's a good counter to uh, anthropomorphizing the animals which unfortunately right. we end up doing at the end with blue but but in general 
animals are just animals. They're not human beings. And we, we, we blur that line to our, you know, with, uh, we should blur that line with trepidation, uh, because it leads Mm -hmm. to bad things. Um, but it's but then he watches the videos of him training blue and changes his mind. So um, I thought that was but I thought that that initial reaction uh, of his was interesting. And I don't think it was just because it was Claire asking um, and he had the, you know, the, their relationship. I think it was, he just was I think it was a genuine we shouldn't. But then he changes his mind because he is. Yeah. Well, I think it's one of those things where you've got a you've got a dog that you've trained. Yeah. That you've lost track of and you know it's in danger and you can go help it that's you really get that sense from him watching those videos of of he's not like i I don't feel like he at any point even anthropomorphizes blue like he doesn't he doesn't consider blue a friend and that's that's i think a big difference between him and the way other people think of the relationship he has with with the dinosaurs uh that he doesn't ever think of them as as friends he knows they're wild animals and he knows that they're they're animals that he's trained but they're still animals. And that's part of the reason that he's able to survive as long as he is, because he's very careful right. not to blur that line. Not to forget. Hmm. It's really refreshing to see he's so conscious of the danger. Really. I mean, he go. I mean, we're going to talk about it in a second, but him tracking blue down alone. He's not very, he's not cavalier about it, which mm-hmm. uh, you could totally see someone being portrayed in these movies like that. that right. You know, go get your friend. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it's in some ways it's almost as if uh, you know if you transpose blue the Velociraptor with blue the wolf dog hybrid. You know, exactly a, a creature that can be loyal is can be very intelligent, but is still a very wild and thus dangerous animal. Uh, mm-hmm. in, in treating them with that respect, and I, I, I kind of felt like you could have just swapped it out, and it would have been the same movie. Um, mm-hmm with the wolves eating the people anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have our, by the way, you know, Claire's got her team with her, the stereotypical nerdy tech guy, Franklin, the stereotypical brash, outspoken tomboyish veterinarian Zia. I mean, they, they, they very much fill a particular slot in the, uh, the casting here. My kids, when they saw Justice Smith, they were like, where do we know that guy from? And they spent the, almost the entire movie like trying to figure out where they knew the guy from. What's he from? And then finally, yeah. he's from Detective Pikachu. That's, oh. that's what they finally came up with. They were like, oh, it's the guy from Detective Pikachu, like in the middle of the <laughs> Jurassic Park. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, great. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's funny. Uh, there is this a scene at this point. So they fly off to the island. Uh, there's a scene at this point where Maisie and Lockwood are having a conversation and she asks him, do I look like her? And we get this shot of the governess, or Iris. She looks like very like trepidatious, like that, that, that question's a loaded question. And then he says, you're, you're a mirror image of her. And, you know, it, when you first see that, you're like, oh, that's sweet. He's, he, you know, she's just like her mom. And then like you see it again, you're like, oh, yeah, she's the oh, clone yeah. of her mom. <laughs> it's a whole different thing. She has to be the mirror image, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh so the uh, the plane arrives at Isla Nubar and there's a whole expedition there already being led by Jimmy Buffett or Corbin, Bur- Corbin Burnson or <laughs> whoever the guy is playing Wheelie. Uh, he looks just like either of those two guys. Um, anyway, he meets them at the plane. He he's uh he's from Monk, which is a, a TV show that we watched oh, yeah. here. You know, he was he was the oh. uh, the captain from Monk, and uh, to see him without the mustache was like, whoa, wait a minute, hold on, <laughs> <laughs> so this is weird. Uh, and then we couldn't get that image of him out of our head either. So he was the Captain <laughs> Stottlemyre the whole time for us. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Um, there's uh there's always the obligatory in the Jurassic movies the obligatory first dinosaur meeting, uh, with an herbivore. Uh, mm-hmm. In all his majesty, that to create the sense of awe, yeah, like there's at first we feel the, tr- the the impact tremor, and then we see, and it is actually you know the the great dan. And then we have John Williams, you know, theme swells and da 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 da, you know, the whole thing, uh, and and so we have that moment here, uh, and the the paleo veterinarian who's never seen a dinosaur up close gets to see one up close, and it's very very sweet. <laughs> And hops out of the car, despite all everyone telling her not to. Yes, <laughs> yes. Like, someone always wait, does that. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Which is, again, that's what Ellie did, right? Remember Ellie right. And, and, and the first movie? They stop the car, she gets out, and they go see. You know, oh, yes, you know, we, we can stop here, I guess. Uh, so there, there's a similar thing there. Um, Franklin, the tech guy, he breaks them into the bunker, 
where they're going to they access the tracking system. Claire unlocks the system, and Owen it goes with the, the mercenaries and the veterinary and Zia to go get Blue, and the others, they stay behind to run the system. Um, they, uh, uh, like you said, Owen goes alone into the woods because, you know, she gets, she'll get spooked by the others. She almost doesn't recognize him at first, it felt like. She was very, you know, like, she's, right. do, yeah. do I trust you? Who are you? She, I like that when he throws her the treat, it just bounces off her nose. She's like, I'm not, <laughs> I, I'm not buying that. Thanks. Uh, no. <laughs> um, and just as he gets her trust, that's when they come in and they, they shoot her with the tranks. Um, mm-hmm. And there's this the betrayal. And then, you know, what are you doing? And then so he shoots Owen with the trank and, and knocks him out. And this is the, the big twist moment where the, we see, oh, they're being betrayed. Uh, although I didn't get that the first time I, I watched this. I didn't like at this very moment when he shoots him, I'm like, why is like, is he just being a jerk to him? Like, why is he shooting him with the trank? Right. Um, it it didn't it didn't hit me until the bunker scene. So until they go back to the bunker and the guys like abandon uh abandon them in the bunker. That, yeah. I, I I was still on the on this sort of are they just really bad at their jobs? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, yeah, some kind of yeah. sort of incompetence going on because you had the opening scene where it was very much that same kind of thing where it was they they seemed sort of like a hack together team, right? <laughs> that, right, that was going in to do all this stuff. And uh, Blue does uh, get the drop on one of the mercs, and he ends up shooting her, so she's now wounded in addition to being uh, tranquilized. Uh, and so Zia has to now help Blue. <laughs> I just I love Wheatley's statement there. Don't don't shoot her like the guys. <laughs> the guys getting having his face on the ground. He's like, don't shoot her. <laughs> exactly. I also like the blue response to him raising his weapon, and like, oh, she recognizes the threat of oh of yeah. someone about mm-hmm. to shoot her, and she goes after him. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, and this is the the moment when the volcano decides to begin exploding because, of course, and so the uh, uh, the others run out of the bunker and lock Claire and Franklin in. Like, what are you doing? Um, and uh, and then a uh, Owen is laying there unconscious uh, in the in the clearing where they found Blue when a Stegosaurus comes by and uh, licks his face to wake him up. It was really gross. Uh, but then this lava is coming through and he can't move it. Chris Pratt does some great um, physical comedy here <laughs> yeah, where he's trying really to uh, <laughs> to escape uh, while uh, nearly uh, unconscious, uh, not in control of his limbs. Uh, he, he does a good job with that one. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, although he's so close to the lava, you would never be able to really do that. It'd be so close. Right. Uh, you'd be caught, you'd caught, you'd catch on fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He literally was literally moment, inches so. away. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Franklin, meanwhile, and Claire in the bunker, Franklin's trying to get the doors open and opens the wrong door <laughs> and something happens to be standing outside that door, uh, <laughs> and comes in, uh, a big, a big dino. Uh, the very scary moment, that moment where it's, where it's coming down the tunnel and they look away for a moment and it lights up behind it and the audience sees it. So it's 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 a great directorial move. It's the mm-hmm. the audience sees the danger that and they want to yell, look behind you. <laughs> right. Uh, so it, it really amps up the tension in that moment. So that was a really good moment. Um, and they end up having to escape out of hatch. Um uh, at the top. I mean, there's there's a lot of action that happens, but uh, uh, to not spend too much time on it. But yeah, well, and that's this this movie like it hits you with the action really fast. Yes, like it it, it hits the action really fast, really hard, and you feel the fact that the director really wants to get to the good part. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, that, that was that was my big problem with this scene was that it felt like we we need to get past this. Let's let's just go, okay. So some stuff happens on the island, and we go back to the really interesting stuff. <laughs> right, mm-hmm. right. The, the the stuff on the island happens literally at a breakneck pace. Uh, it, it 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 you don't have a moment to breathe. Um. And so they get out the escape hatch out of the frying pan into the into the fire. Uh, the di- the volcano that explodes uh, even more. Um, Owen comes running in front of all the dinosaurs behind him, running for uh, the meadow, which reminds us of the Gallimima scene from the original where they're jumping over the log. Uh, they find a gyroscope ball from the last movie um, and. Uh, Franklin and Claire get in, but before Owen can get in, it, a, a big carnivore dino shows up. I, I I can't keep track of all the names. I know the big. This one was, <laughs> that one was a Carnotaur. Oh, okay, Carnotaur. Yeah, it's actually okay. called the Carnotaur. Yeah. Well, that, that's <laughs> a know. fitting name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he gets locked out. The ball starts rolling down the hill. Uh, T Rex comes along. Uh, it's all these near misses. Uh, big explosion off the cliff into the sea. 
I just want to point out first, though, this is the third time that Owen has been saved by the T-Rex. Yes. So, she, you know, <laughs> she's, she's T-Rex a, likes Owen. She's got a thing for him, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, so when the, the ball goes over the cliff into the sea, I saw how they filmed it. They create, they built a big roller coaster in a back lot and hmm. rolled the, 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 a gyroscope ball off of it with um, Bryce Dallas Howard and Justice... Uh, uh, what's Smith, it? Smith, uh, Justice Smith. Yeah. Inside, their reactions were real. Like they, those scared faces. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can say they were really reacted to going off the, the 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 drop on the roller coaster. So it was really good. That was a good one. Hmm. Uh, Do you guys ever have the thing where like a, this is a drowning threat? Do you try to hold your breath uh, <laughs> as they <laughs> as they try to survive? It's like, gosh, I could never do this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You you find yourself like uh, 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 like hyperventilating, you get all the mm-hmm. air in, and holding your breath. Yeah, there's no way, there's no way, but they do. You know, everyone always mm-hmm. does. Um, uh, so they they you know, lots of things happens. They end up getting out of the gyroscope ball as it's sinking. Uh, they get to the get to the land. They see they get to the port where all the dinos are being loaded on. Uh, the ship starts pulling away. Um, they, you know, as everything's really going bad and it's really coming at them, uh, they're being bombed by pyroclastic uh, flow. Uh, the the uh, or the pyroclastic bombs, I think they call them, the the bits yeah. of magma that gets flung into the air and drops like a bomb. Um, we see Wheatley, uh, his habit of taking a dino tooth as a trophy. Uh, which is going to be, right. it's a bad habit to get into. I think, <laughs> bad you. habit. It's going to yeah. turn, it's going to turn out bad for you, Wheatley. So uh, you shouldn't be doing that. Um, and of course they barely get on board. So it, it you know, there's lots of action uh, uh, moments in that. Uh, but, uh, it, and then we see the, we see this, there's this nice moment as the ship is pulling away, everyone's like, you know, looking back and there's one lone, Okay, I'm always going to call it a brontosaurus because that's what it always was when I was a kid. I don't know what it's mm. uh, I can't remember what it's called now. But I think it's a brachiosaur. Brachiosaur, right, right, brachiosaur. <laughs> so, uh, one lone brachiosaur standing on the on the pier as the lava comes and the smoke and takes him. It's a very affecting moment. It's a very uh, sad moment to see. All right, but honestly, I have to say, like the the amount of noise that came out about this, I was expecting something really dramatic here, and like the shadow of a brachiosaur in the middle of a bunch of smoke just did not like it didn't pit me in the stomach the way no. I was expecting it to. <laughs> right, right. Well, it's it's sort of the end of the era. I mean, this is the end of the island. Right. We, we can't go. We, yeah. we, there's this is we, you're not going to go back to the island yet another time in another movie. This is it, and and there's a little bit of that yeah. in there. Um, yeah. And we get the overhead shot of the of the island is completely like being covered with uh, that is one violent volcano. That's like Krakatoa level uh, volcano. <laughs> right, I, I yeah. gotta tell you, um, nobody got off that island without my favorite word in the English language: staphylococcal silical volcaniosis. <laughs> <laughs> which is a volcano Best. disease it's, yeah. which volcano disease <laughs> yeah, right. i love that one <laughs> <laughs> so um the ship they're on is called the arcadia it is the fastest ship in the world like the one that uh, went from san diego back to it in jurassic uh, <laughs> 2 um because it gets from off the coast of costa rica to northern california in a day so uh which is pretty impressive it's booking it it's booking it yeah um <laughs> Yeah, we meet. By the way, back at Lockwood's estate, we uh, Mills is now talking to the auction ear, the guys arranging the big auction of the dinosaurs, uh, played by Toby Jones, who is awesome. Wait, wait, wait. We we skipped an off scene moment here because I want to know how they got through customs in Panama. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my like, pet. <laughs> you know, like what what cargo are you carrying? Well, um. <laughs> Some bananas? Is that okay? (laughs) Again, how much are these people getting paid? (laughs) Right, not enough. Uh, So, yeah, uh, Toby Jones, the the fabulous Toby Jones, who I just watched uh, in Doctor Who as the Dream Lord in that episode Mm. there, because he's Mm. just really great. Um, But uh, Mills is going to sell the Isla Nublar dinosaurs as seed money for his other project, which is to create genetically manipulated dinosaurs for weapons, uh, for military use. Um, and his first prototype is the Indoraptor, which is a combination of Indominus Rex and the Velociraptor, although Indominus Rex was already a combination of T-Rex <laughs> yeah. and the Velociraptor, so more, mm-hmm. I guess. I don't know. But um, uh, So they're, they're creating these new dinosaurs that can be trained that and are intelligent like Blue and can be you know, behaviorally uh, put under control and that sort of thing. 
So on the ship, uh, they find Zia. She's treating Blue's gunshot wound. Uh, and they need a transfusion from another carnivore who's got two or three toes. And yeah, there's only one on board. And it's the T-Rex, of course. <laughs> of course. Hmm. It's got to be. <laughs> uh, I, I do have to say the animatronic they'd use for Blue in this scene, it's all like physical effect. It's all real there. Mm-hmm. Is really uh, impressive. I saw yeah. how they did it. It's uh, like four guys under the table. Mm-hmm. basically manipulating it by hand together. Hmm. And it just goes to show that that is so much more effective than all of the CG that you can yes. throw out. Like there, there are places for the CGI, right? But, but that physical, first off, just for the actors to be able to have something to interact with, right? Mm-hmm. But then the, the reality that it brings to the situation, it, it just, it makes it so good. <laughs> that was probably <laughs> one of the best scenes in the movie right there. Yeah. And it's yeah. because there was a physical dinosaur on the table. That's right. It's right. It was it's so effectively acted, so effectively uh, conveyed what was going on. Yeah, it's very. And the other practical effect was the other dinosaur, the T-Rex, which that was great, was mm-hmm. a huge practical effect. Of course, in the midst of trying to. Uh, get the transfusion out of the de- the T Rex wakes has to wake up of course which is again a lot of fun Chris Pratt does a great job with that um, mm-hmm. and he has to dive through the dinosaur mouth uh, to get out <laughs> yeah. and, and Chris no this was funny Chris Pratt did wanted to do it himself he didn't want a stat man to do it but he says mm-hmm. if when he comes out if he goes out of frame the audience is going to think it's one of those things where the stat man jumps out and the actor just jumps up from the ground and make it look like Mm -hmm. he did it. So he's like, every time he did it, he would fall out of frame. And he's like, no, I want to do it again. I want to stay in frame. So everyone knows I did it. So so they did it over and over again. Um, That sounds like a Chris Pratt thing. Yes, it does. (laughs) Looked good. It, it, yes, it did look good. Uh, So uh, then we have back in, in the Lockwood estate, Maisie breaks into the dino lab. Uh, She watches a video of how blue is different from the other Raptors, uh, where it shows empathy for Owen, you know, it's it's not just it sees weakness and doesn't want to attack. It sees weakness and wants to show empathy. So, I think they've evolved, they're in one sense the filmmakers are evolving Blue beyond what she was in Jurassic World. I don't think she was like mm-hmm. this there. They've added to her legend. Yeah, the she was a threat to Owen in the last one as well. When the Indominus Rex showed up, they, I mean, whatever you can say for killer dinosaurs uh change teams but um <laughs> that uh yeah he didn't have this empathic bond they weren't there's a friendliness that she cares on an animal level cares for his his well-being that we did not see at all right right yeah so they they've really yeah they've really modified that character and i think in order to make that connection between Maisie and blue uh more explicit in in this movie so um uh, so we have um she's watched the video then when um henry Wu shows up played by the great bd wong who was fabulous in uh um oh it just slipped my mind the the tv series with the the hacker um uh, uh what was the oh, mr robot mr robot yes yeah. yes uh he was great in that and uh yeah. he's 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 gets a much media role in the last few movies uh of the jurassic series and so he shows up here i'm gonna guess he's gonna be the big villain in the next one dominion uh, that my guess um but he shows up with uh mills and they have this discussion and she has to run to you know to keep hiding and almost ends up like in fr- she ends up in front of the indoraptors cage backing mm-hmm. up toward it and you have this moment where this claw this horrific claw comes out at her and just touches her hair and it's like <laughs> wow it's just super scary super creepy uh the, the that that one um so uh his he um Wu is telling Mills that Blue's role isn't just to be genetic material she needs to be the behavioral model for the next Indoraptor the current raptor is a prototype and frankly deranged. It's like a madman. It's it's not quite right in the head. Um, mm-hmm. And then we see that they they show it physically. It twitches a lot. You know, if you notice that, like in in the scenes, mm-hmm. and it has these weird right. ticks, and uh, it, it, and so it's uh, and it's in fact, there's parts where like the skin looks like the like the scales are messed up, and so it's a uh, it's definitely not the end product that they're hoping it to be that that they're dealing with here. Um, and so. 
we have uh, back on the ship, Franklin is separated from Owen and Claire. Uh, he, he's mistaken for part of the crew. Um, and the dinos are being driven up from the, the port near the Lockwood estate to the lab. Um, meanwhile, uh, Lockwood has figured out, I think based on what Maisie has tried to tell him, that that, right. that Mills is betraying him, is betraying his, his mm -hmm. values and doing this awful thing. Um, and this is where Mills murders Lockwood. And and Thomas, you were saying this is a, a, in a unique moment. This is the first time, yeah, first time that a human has killed a human in the oh, Jurassic wow. Park uh, right. series. And there, there's no other time where it's happened. And, there, and there's been plenty of opportunities where it would have made yep. sense, but it hasn't happened until this Are moment. There, there is a moment, isn't there a moment where someone just kind of shoves someone else out of the way and that person gets dynoed? Yes, but it's more of, that's more of a, like a survival, right. you know, like Not, I, I just need to run faster than you to be able to get out of this situation, right, right. which I don't, I don't count. Personally, I don't count that as murder. It's kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of a gray area. It's not, it's yeah. not great, but it's, it's, yeah. you know, it's not as direct as this one is like right. very much, you know, uh, he did this out of complete, out of a complete sense of malice and yeah. uh, malice you know, needing to cover up what he's doing. He willed it. He, <laughs> you know, yeah, right. it, it was grave matter. <laughs> All the conditions for really chose. Said. He really yes. chose it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, meanwhile, uh, Wheatley ends up capturing Owen and Claire. They're locked up in the lab in one of the cages. Cause of course, um, Mills shows up and throws in Claire's face. This is an interesting moment that like, she's like, how dare you do this? He says, you did it. You exploited mm -hmm. a living thing in a cage for money. How's that different from mm -hmm. what I what I'm doing? And I was wondering, it's is the difference really the fact that she's repented and has tried to make amends versus what he's doing? Uh, I mean, I feel like she made she did make a mistake, but she's changed. Right. I would say so. I would say that that's really the only difference between the two of them at this point. OK. And uh, she does get that good um, bashing his face off the bars moment here uh, huh. at, at this huh. point. Good moment. Yeah. So. Uh, Maisie is has been locked in a room by uh, Mills, who apparently sees her as yet a, a, just another one of these genetic uh, monsters that that Lockwood is responsible for that he's going to exploit. I, I really got that sense that was his intent mm -hmm. with her. Um, mm -hmm. And she, but she escapes the room by climbing up on this ledge, uh, which apparently she's done. She, she must have done before because she knew exactly where she was going. Right. Well, see, that's where, that's where I think you see, you start to see some of these wildling tendencies in her of you know yes. crawling around the outside of the of the building and things like right. that. Right. That's true. That's true. Uh, hmm. But she's going to her grandfather, and she sadly finds him that he's there dead. Um, uh, we we it, she's she's um, ends up looking down and seeing all the unsavory people showing up for the auction. That was one of the things we got there. Um, but when she gets to her grandfather's room, uh, she finds this photo album that he wouldn't let her look at. And she sees the photo of her mother, quote unquote. Um, and uh, and then she grabs the album and runs into the dumbwaiter uh, when Mills comes in um, and, you know, oh, no, Iris, come quick. Lockwood has died. You know, the fake crocodile tears um, and fires her on the spot. It's like, well, we are not going to need you anymore. Um, I'm Maisie's guardian <laughs> and I know her value, he says. So mm -hmm. there's a, th that's where he kind of gets that, that mercenary attitude toward yeah. Maisie. Uh, so Claire and Owen, uh, in, in their cage, they're locked up next to the head butting dinosaur, this, this, this plate headed dinosaur, um, Pachycephalosaurus. Pachyce thank you. Pac a pachysaur. Uh, so glad you're here, Tom. You know, I mean, this is one of the reasons you're here is to help us with the dino names. The pachycephalosaurus. Um, he he incites it to break through the wall and then break out of the uh, the the through the, the cage through the uh, the bars, and that's how they get out. And then they meet Maisie, and uh, they the, during the auction, uh, they go up and they look at watch the auction from above. And during the auction, it's interesting. There's this hubris moment of uh, Mills and Ebelsall, you know, in the midst of auctioning off all the regular dinosaurs. They're like, oh, and now we're going to show you our new project. And they bring it in and, you know, they're not intending to auction it off, just show it off and show how it's trained to attack by following, you know, whatever the laser pulse is pointed at. Uh, and then it attacks on hearing an acoustic trigger which is Chekhov's laser pulse and acoustic trigger. 
frankly. <laughs> Which I have to tell you, I, we were watching Space Force. My wife and I were watching Space Force yep. around this time. And um, the second episode of Space Force, there's a, a trained chimp yes. in space that's trained to follow <laughs> this <right>. laser. <laughs> <laughs> and I could not get the image of those two things out of my head at the same time. <laughs> so don't uh, point it at the It's very dog. funny in Space Force. Yeah. Completely different kind of thing. Yeah, don't point it at the dog. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so they and they start auctioning it off to the chagrin of of Wu. He's like, don't auction off my prototype here. This is we'll make more. This Mills's uh, attitude. And Owen resolves that thing won't leave the building. He sees if what it is. It's a monster. It's not a dinosaur. It's an abomination. And uh, so his as he's trying to figure out what to do, he sees the pack of the dinosaur, and it says, "Oh, uh, you think what I'm thinking?" And he releases it into the auction room where people are <laughs> flying through the air uh, all over the place uh, and and people go running out the doors and the the you know the dino I, I don't think the dinosaurs are chasing them i think just the peckless episode runs out into the woods uh, yeah. after them right um and that's when uh Wheatley shows up uh he he's seen the the chaos comes in and everybody's gone at this point and there's just the indoraptor in the cage and so he shoots it with one dart, it doesn't take it down. He shoots it with a second dart, and it doesn't go down. And he's like, and he gets ready to shoot it with a third, and it gets the clue, like, oh, I should play dead. Right. And where mm-hmm. it pretends to get knocked out, and so he goes in to take his trophy of the tooth, and it gets the drop on him in a, you know, a, a, the the satisfying way that the bad guy gets you, you, right. uh, <laughs> shown up by the, uh, the, the dinosaur. And then uh, Eversol also gets taken out by the dinosaur in in a somewhat nearly satisfying way uh he he almost gets away and then he doesn't <laughs> <laughs> so then in the back in the tunnels below the the auction and below the house mills finally corners owen and claire uh and he's telling he, he's trying to tell them you know you can't have Maisie. you don't know what she is she's a monster like the rest of them um uh and that's going uh, poorly until the Indoraptor shows up, <laughs> like right. boom, and there go two of the mercenaries. <laughs> and uh, so the lab is being evacuated. W- Wu wants to wants um to make sure that he gets some of Blue's blood j- for genetics mm. before they get out. Um, Zia, who's still there, tells him it's contaminated. I made her pure. I was there at her birth. Yeah, I pumped her full of T Rex blood as a T Rex <laughs> blood. So it basically, he's a, a sock drawer inside. I like that line. It's like a sock drawer. Uh, the guards show up, and you know, so Franklin tranks uh, uh, Wu at this point. And then the guards show up. They take away Wu, uh, but then Zia lets Blue out. And it's interesting because Blue doesn't attack Zia because I think he she recognizes Zia as the one who saved her. Right. And she goes after the guard. A um, bunch of stuff happens. Some flammable gas explodes and then toxic gas starts escaping. That's, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of action goes on, but um, right. <laughs> um, so back up in the, the natural history museum, part of the mansion, there be uh, uh, Owen and Claire and M- Maisie are being stalked by the Indoraptor. And uh, so here we have, they're caught in a mansion at night in a storm with a homicidal maniac. Yeah. I mean, it's essentially what we have here. Monster movie. It's a monster movie. hundred <laughs> percent. So uh, once again, the solution to the problem, as we saw in Jurassic Park one is rebooting the servers, which causes them <laughs> always, to, always, which will cause them once the servers reboot for the lights to come up and then to be seen by the dinosaur. That's, that's right. This is what happened in the first one. Um, the, uh, and, and there's an interesting moment where, Claire's reflect they're inside one of the exhibits behind the glass and Claire's face she screams and you see her reflection and then on the other side of it you see the dinosaur its face mirroring Maisie so we're kind of getting this symbolic she's a mirror Mm. image of in a way of this wild thing Um, right and uh, it's maybe maybe a little predictive of what we'll see from her as you mentioned in the next movie Mm-hmm. Right. So, but and then she gets it's another one where another uh, type anti type moment. She gets chased down the hallway. Uh, Maisie does and climbs in the dumbwaiter and can't get it closed by pulling the door from above while it's running at her. She gets it closed just in time for it to run into it and knock itself out. 
Where have we right. seen that before? That was in the kitchen <laughs> in Jurassic Park yeah, 1. Yeah, kitchen mm-hmm. Jurassic. Yeah. There was also another one in when they were in the museum where they're sitting behind one of the stands and you see the the Indoraptor move around the back and that was the same kind of thing where they're yes. in the kitchen and you could see them moving around behind them. Yes, very much an homage to the original. Um mm-hmm. so and then there's another moment where Claire has been injured and she says go help Maisie, go save Maisie. And then she like is uh, she says run just like Ellie did remember in the, in the uh, in the first one in the first one who had also yeah. had her leg injured like leg mm-hmm. was injured at the time yeah yes. she was limping along the whole time <laughs> uh, you know, they're they're reliving all these moments it's it's, it's amazing <laughs> um, so uh, I mentioned how uh, Maisie had gone to her bedroom and pulled up the covers because that's what a eleven year old girl would do or however old she's supposed to be. Um, when the the and then when the Indoraptor comes, it's it's a shot for shot remake of the the uh, Dracula movie, uh, nineteen seventy nine. Oh. Um, but this time, Blue comes to the rescue again. You know, Blue is mm-hmm. always it's like Superman keeps showing up, just <laughs> coming to the rescue. Um, and we have this battle on the roof. They get cornered on the glass roof of the of that Natural History Museum area. Um, and then there's this moment I I I'm trying to figure out. How did Claire know to point the laser at Owen and and send the 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 uh, Indoraptor? Because if I was Owen, I'd be like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. <laughs> but he apparently knew I, what to do. That's I think they're trying to they're they try to make them a couple yeah. really often in these movies, and I don't know. I, I it it kind of works, but at the same time, they're just too both of them too bullheaded to. Yeah. <laughs> to be a good couple so th- this is re- literally the only time that they're going to make a good couple is yeah. when they're facing a dinosaur and they have to use each other to kill the dinosaur you know <laughs> well they tried dating twice under normal circumstances exactly the yeah. only time it works is danger of death <laughs> well wasn't there the uh that line from speed do you remember that sp- the yes, line? that's exactly what i was just thinking of yeah, <laughs> yeah. don't 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 go into a relationship that you started under under duress <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. It, that's like every movie yeah so mm-hmm. yeah uh, well, in, in this case, the the Indoraptor can't control itself, even though the glass won't support its weight. It runs at Owen. He dives out of the way and it falls through the glass, but doesn't quite fall all the way and is able to climb out and is about to finish him off until Blue comes again, jumps on the Indo. And we have this slow-mo dropping, spinning, you know, the hero and the villain together falling until... Uh, the Indoraptor gets impaled on the Triceratops skull. Um, and the, the roll credits end of the movie, right? And, well, no. That, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? Of course. <laughs> the villain is dead. There's like, that's, there are so many points in this movie where it's like, okay, we're done, right? No. <laughs> yeah. No, it, and it's not that it's bad. It's just, you know. This is the moment, they, they right? Did a whole, yeah, they, mm-hmm. they shoved a whole movie into 20 minutes, and then they did it again. <laughs> and they put on a little tag at the end, too. <laughs> it's like the, the end of The Return of the King. You know, just, <laughs> yeah. is this the end? Is this the end? I mean, for those of us who'd read the book, we knew it wasn't, but for everyone else. <laughs> yeah. um, so the... Then uh, they ha- they end up going down into the lab where the dinosaurs are dying from the toxic gas. Um, and Claire, interestingly, comes to the decision. Where I'm like, I can't I can't let them out. I can't like these are as much as I want them to survive. If I open the door and let them out, they're going to be wa- out in the wild. People are going to die. And so I have to let I uh, have to put people first. But Maisie hits the button and opens the door and lets them out. and. And she says, I had to. They're alive like me. Well, mm-hmm. only sort of. <laughs> You're a person. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> like, yeah. But they're, they're, I, I, again, I think it's a, a little bit of foreshadowing of what we might, might see from Maisie in the future. Yeah, I think that she is sympathizing with them a lot because she's been relegated to this, this sense of, you know, she's, she's the Frankenstein. She's the classic Frankenstein's monster, right? right. Where, um, she's a creation and she doesn't know where she fits because she's not a creation in the same way that you and I are creations, right? She's, she's a creation of a human, not of God. And so there's this disconnect between her and us but the dinosaurs are, if you took Frankenstein's monster and then made a whole bunch more Frankenstein's monsters <laughs> right. and, and they could sympathize with each other in this sort of altered sense where they're all creations of man. And now there's like this kind of 
depth to it. And it also brings into question, like, how deeply thinking, how deeply sentient is Blue? Like, how much does Blue know right. what what she's doing? Like, because, you know, there is there is a comparison in um, uh, in paleobiology between the that era, that, that generation of dinosaurs, the Truodons, and the, the last few really highly evolved raptors, uh, whether or not they were smart enough to be as smart as a human, just they didn't have all of the technical tools, you know, the opposable thumbs and things like mm, that. Right. So, you know, they, they're kind of touching on those boundaries, too. I think Mills mentions that he says that Blue might be the second smartest thing on the planet when they are making those mm-hmm. justifications for saving him. And exactly. I think tied into that is just that what is their the dinosaurs don't really have an identity that they they're not dinosaurs, that they're these new creations. And Maisie has that sort of similar place in the world of uh, she looks like them, she acts like us, but but she knows her identity is different. I mean, mm-hmm. in the real world as Catholics, we wouldn't say that about a little girl, uh, but for the sake of the, right. the story, just not see. Yeah, I think, Dom, you're right on with that. I don't know if she's going to be queen of the dinosaurs, but she's going to have something to do with it in the next movie. Yeah. It, also interesting, too, that the only dinosaur that has a name is Blue. You know, mm-hmm. that all the others are just T-Rex or, what you know, Indoraptor or whatever. But Blue is 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 a person in in that sense. She's given a personality. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I mean, I think they kind of portray her as being like, is intelligent as a dolphin, so like a, a dolphin that could rip your head off. But you know, a t- you know that's sort of thing I've compared <laughs> to like a wolf hybrid or a dolphin. But like, but she's as intelligent. And and there are some people who think that dolphins are as sentient as human beings, and just don't have opposable thumbs. Well, and and dolphins also have been known to be cruel. There's uh, uh, yep. very very rarely do you see that in nature, but they there have been documented instances of of dolphins abusing other sea life and even their own even their own kind, and they do it. You know, uh, science, scientists go through and justify why they do it because it's like practice on how to how to attack certain things. But they they do pick every once in a while a certain uh, creature, and then they pick on it until it dies. And, you know, so we, we think of dolphins as this nice, happy thing, but <laughs> they have they have this malice inside of them, too, that they can right. uh, exhibit that's not common for the animal kingdom. Hmm. So, you know, something to think about mm-hmm. in kind of an altered sort of way. So um, we have this uh, stampede of animals leaving the lab and the two guards who are too dumb to move out of the way, uh, but uh, they end up dying <laughs> uh, again. They don't get paid enough, apparently. Uh, and, uh, so Mills, his guards and his vehicle get destroyed and he thinks he's safe finally when, as always at the end of every, all these movies, the T-Rex shows up and chomps him and he gets, he gets what's coming to him. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's, it is not pretty. Uh, I do appreciate the fact that in all the Jurassic movies, while there is much mayhem and death, it is not gory generally. I mean, people yeah. get torn yeah. up and it's very clearly, but it's not messy. In that sense, mm-hmm. so they, there is some restraint, and I think that shows Spielberg's influence. He tr- he tends to shy away from that, right? And it's interesting because that's not the source material. I mean, if you've ever read Crichton's books, Crichton's books are gory. Yeah, uh, they're very. There's lots of internals coming out and you know <laughs> spilling of things. So it's not uh, you know if you if you've watched the Jurassic Park movies and then you go to read the books, don't be surprised by that <laughs> yeah. by that occurrence. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, then we have, uh, this moment where Owen and blue have their encounter. Uh, he wants her to go with him, but they both look sort of at the cage and re- and she realizes going with him means going back into a cage. And she's like, I'm not going into, I'm free now and runs off into the woods, but there's a connection between them. There's clearly this connection. Uh, and then we get a whole bunch of, um, uh, some v- shots of, uh, oh, well, first we see that. People did get away with both dinosaurs and dino DNA. So, mm-hmm. again, this is what the next movie is going to involve some of that. Um, and we get Malcolm back before the Senate. Um, he, he says sudden change is woven into the fabric of things. Dinosaurs and humans that were for, forced to coexist. If we're not careful, dinosaurs will be here after us. And you know, they were here before mm-hmm. us. And if we're not, he, it's a repeat of that same line he gives, actually, I think, in Jurassic 2 or one i forget which one it was but uh he he has given that line before uh and then we get these scenes of dinosaurs interacting with people or our world um the giant crocodile and the surfers the t-rex and the lion at the zoo and uh 
and we, we've entered into a new era. Welcome to Jurassic World, as Malcolm says. And and we get end with this shot of blue standing on a bluff overlooking some subdivision outside of some California city somewhere, you know, hmm. that, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, the, the the promise of what is to come. Uh, and, uh, and in fact, I think the last shot is seeing the pterodactyls, which we keep seeing in all these movies, mm -hmm. pterodactyls flying away into the sunset. Um, and Maisie in the car with uh, Owen and Claire. So, and that's that's where we end. So, what what do we have to look forward to in the next one? Now, we 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 do know some little bits about the next one. We know, for instance, that Sam Neill and uh, um, Laura Dern are going to be in it. Right? Is Laura. are we? Yeah. I'm sure, uh, no, that no, he died. No, I was just trying to think of like uh, the is Samuel L. Jackson. No, he's dead. No, <laughs> I'm trying to think of all the ones yeah. that survived who might might be in it. But uh, uh, there's it's slim pickings. There's, there's not many. There's though. not many survived. <laughs> uh, so that's interesting. And Sam Neill, the way the way he's he, he's been tweeting about it a lot, and he's apparently very directly involved with dinosaurs. So it's not just that he's like a you know comes in for a consulting role or like speaks or something, but, but like he Malcolm. gets the hat back on. Yeah. And, right? Yeah, yeah. No, he's he's back into his uh, Indiana Jones type role. Okay. in this one, that should be good. It'll be interesting to see him interacting with Owen in the in that sense. That should yes, be, hmm, very should much be so. Um, okay, so uh, how do we think? You know, if we were a little predictive here, how do we think this will all wrap up? What is going to be the end of like, how will the movie end uh, from your just based on what we've talked about so far through five movies? What do you think is going to be the result? I don't I don't think they'll be able to wrap it up in a neat bow, um, kind of going along with the Pandora's box theme that all the, it's not just that these dinosaurs are free. Like you said, that there's people from Russia that have dinosaur DNA. There will be new cloning, maybe new uh new invented dinosaurs, new combinations and things. Um, honestly, this is the story that I feel like now that we've gotten part, most of the way through this new trilogy that I'm most interested in, that we've kind of relived some things from the original trilogy already. Um, now we get to see, Oh, this is what happens. This is what you people have, have brought into the world. Yeah. And I think it'll be refreshing in a way, maybe that this movie wasn't not to give away too much what I thought about this movie. Um, but I look forward to kind of the the chaos. I don't know what kind of story can come out of that because I don't think they'll be able to to wrap it all up and and finish things. Yeah, I just hope it doesn't turn into Sharknado. You know, that's <laughs> that's my that's my big concern yeah. with it. Uh, no, but I, I think I, I think really the cat's out of the bag. And um, it, it, interestingly, I was really thinking about this the other day. This might be the perfect movie to wrap up this season that we're going through where we're experiencing an incredible change in the world. And um, we are going to have to deal with a very new normal coming out of this, uh, this whole coronavirus mess and um, the timing of this movie coming out, if they can get it out in 2021, where it might actually be at the tail end of that, hopefully uh, the, the, the tail end of all of this uh, craziness. Um, it might be the movie we need to see if they can really pull it off of like, okay, well, what do we do when there's a new normal like this? When there's, we have to deal with these uh, bloodthirsty creatures flying around, uh, uh, you know, the flying around Las Vegas and landing on the, the replica Eiffel Tower. Right, <laughs> like, right. like uh, how do we as humans then, um, you know, manage to carve our place out in this new Jurassic world? Right. What's the new normal, as the yeah. phrase goes? Uh, yeah, that I think that's what it is. And I mean, in a sense, where they could go from there is like we talked about, like if they did a series to jump ahead mm -hmm. fifty years or a hundred yeah. years, what kind of world comes out of that? Because what we, I think, what we will see um, is a world where not only do we have uh, genetically enhanced dino creatures. But we have cloned people too, and this and, mm -hmm. and a divide between the cloned and the naturally born, and I, I can see that becoming a a wider divide. Um, you know, we've seen that theme in things like Gattaca and other uh, Brave New World and, and that sort of thing, and, and so it's a theme that would be revisited. But um, I think I think that's we will end up the next movie with um, hope and a warning, where mm -hmm. where we won't get rid of the dinosaurs. But there will be a, both a positive aspect to the dinosaurs 
and a potential negative aspect. You know, the, the mm-hmm. negative being that dinos eat people, but uh, the positive being dinosaurs and humans working together in, in some in mm-hmm. some respect. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think that would that I that's my prediction for how that movie will will end. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes whenever it comes. Uh, any final thoughts on Fallen Kingdom? It just struck me that they took what I think were the scariest dinosaurs from Jurassic Park, the Velociraptors, and made it made uh, made them a friend and an ally. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, the, the, that's a strange turn. Yes, yes, it's the uh, Star Trek villain factor. Klingons go from villain to friend. You know, the Ferengi go from villain to well, comic <laughs> relief. Yeah, you know, they just <laughs> we we once once you've seen a villain enough, you need to have a worse villain show up. And the original unless villain, it's yeah. unless it's Wu. Yeah, yeah. Wu did the opposite. Always a bad guy. Yeah. Well, yeah. In fact, in the original, he started, Wu was, for, he started an ally. Yeah, right? <laughs> he started as just a, a scientist in the lab. He seemed like a nice guy. Mm-hmm. Turns out, didn't know him all that well. I guess. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> all right. Um, anything, uh, Thomas? Anything? Uh, any last notes? Um, I I liked I liked parts of this movie. I I thought that um, I really wish they would have just done away with the the Jurassic parkiness of it and gone with the monster flick. Yeah. And I, I think you would have had a much better uh, movie, but then at the same time, I, I, I say that. And then I turn around and look at star Wars where you had someone really try and break the mold with the, the last Jedi. And it just, it broke the it mold. Did, it didn't fit. <laughs> it, broke, it broke the mold, you know, it didn't, it didn't fit. So, um, I don't know. I it's I, I struggle with with this movie because the parts that I like are not the parts that are Jurassic Park parts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, but it was well done you know the monster movie aspect of it was very well done it was very interesting but it was it just felt so crammed into this tiny little space right trying to fit all the rest of the stuff in it felt like they wanted to make sure that they appealed to the people who like the jurassic parky stuff uh mm-hmm. so there was some of that for them and then had the other stuff that they really wanted to do as well and right. when 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 you're neither fish nor fowl you're well, you're a monster dinosaur, <laughs> which is what we end up with. Uh, yeah. And so I agree. I it, it wasn't as bad, I think, as people made it out to be. I think people yeah. it said, and it's it's a classic middle middle movie of a trilogy issues, which is yes, it's yes. neither the beginning nor the end of a story, and so that's fine. Uh, but um, yeah, it it didn't fulfill the uh, some of the promise. It felt like you've you're, you've crammed a couple things together. And they've got to work together. And so there wasn't enough time for either one of them to really bear out. Yeah. Um, and, and frankly, the whole running down the mountain, running from dinosaurs bit at the beginning, we'd seen it a million times. I mean, there mm-hmm. was, it right. was nothing new there. So um, it, that, that whole aspect could have been even shorter than it was and yeah. given more time to the other mm-hmm. part. So I agree with that. Um, all right. So we should uh, wrap it up there until... Lord knows when we'll talk about Jurassic World again, uh, the, but someday we will. Uh, but but until then, uh, we want to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create secrets of movies and TV shows, including Thomas W., Matthew N., Brett A., and Elizabeth K. Their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of movies and TV shows and all the shows at StarQuest. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. So that's it from us. Uh, What do you think of uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom? You can let us know by commenting on the show at sqpn.com slash secrets or the StarQuest Facebook page or send us an email to secrets at sqpn.com. Until next time, Father Michael Gossett, thank you for joining me and sharing the secrets of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Thank you. Maybe see you next year about this. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Thomas Inerho, thank you as well. It's a pleasure. And once again, I'm Dom Bettinelli. Thank you for listening to the Secrets of Movies and TV Shows on StarQuest. <laughs>